So we just pulled it out of the printer. We're gonna go ahead and test fit this. Uh, once the test fit's good, we're gonna go ahead and return this. So the part in question is going to be the S13 Sylvia GTR grill. You can see here, um, you can buy a different bunch of different versions of them. You're going to see there's a carbon fiber fiberglass. The, the fiberglass version is like 250-ish, but it actually doesn't look all that good because they separate the parts. And you can see that there's like screw pieces because they have to make it in multiple parts. Whereas like the genuine plastic version. It's hard to find one that's like in good condition. They'll sell for anywhere from like 250 to 400. So like this one, this one, which is in like fairly good condition, it's like actually 450. So we're gonna go ahead and order this, and then I'm gonna scan it and reverse engineer it. Well, the package is here. Go ahead and open it. So when we bought it, um, it wasn't absolutely perfect perfect, because this is the best condition one we could find. Um, but there were a couple issues. I just want to make sure that they are correct. So if you look at it So these tabs are here It looks like all these tabs are intact, which is important. This tab's intact. This one's broken off Which is fine because we have this side So we have everything we need. So let's go ahead and scan this and then move on. Now we're gonna prep this for scanning. So There's a lot of uh, scanning sprays available um, I use Dr. Scholl's Odor X non not sponsored but um, I use this just because it's like significantly cheaper and this is not so, something that I would consider like a sensitive part they make a uh, specific scanning sprays that evaporate um, if it's like a sensitive part and you can't really like wipe it down but you can see I've already sprayed a little bit here and when I'm done with it all I have to do is just wipe it off like that so it's pretty simple to use um, I like these because these don't smell like feet or speed spray um, if you use like gold bond. So this is my personal recommendation. It doesn't come on super thick, but you want to spray it to make sure that the part is uh, non-reflective. So that's done. The scanner I'm going to use today is the Artec Eva. Uh, it's a handheld scanner. I need to buy it with my computer. Go ahead and mine it. Well, today I'm gonna scan this basically against the floor. The floor helps uh, helps the scanner see where it is relative to space. And you're gonna see um, on the software I'm gonna be scanning basically all the corners and you can kind of see what I'm doing. I scan multiple angles, so I just flipped it over. Let's scan it again. And we're gonna do a couple more angles, so sometimes uh, I'll do it off camera. But we're also gonna film something like this, where I can get the side and the front in the same scan, and then I'll align everything together. So what you see here are the scans imported into Artec Studio. It's sped up 10x, but what I'm doing right now is lining up all my different scans together, fusioning them, and it's gonna give me an STL that I can import into CAD software like SOLIDWORKS that I can reverse engineer. Now I'm going to import the scan into SOLIDWORKS and that begins the reverse engineering. A lot of the reverse engineering itself is cut out because frankly it's quite boring. If you do like that part, subscribe and let us know. We can do a little more detailed stuff on that. So what you see here is I've imported our reverse engineered part and the scan. I'm currently comparing the two to make sure everything's up to snuff and we're good to print. This is a great opportunity to reinforce parts, modify it, do whatever you see is fit. Once that's done, I'm going to import the part into your preferred 3D printing software. For us, that's Cura. One piece of professional advice I want to give is always inspect your part before it prints. So this is the printer I use for all my small parts. This is a Modix Big 60X. I use this for anything that needs to be prototyped, generally smaller. I keep this to like all my custom brackets and whatnot. Um, it's a pretty good printer. It's a, essentially what it is, it's a custom built 8020. It's like a, uh, if you're familiar with like Simrig, Simrigs are more or less just custom built out of uh, aluminum frame. This is essentially the same thing, but it uses a lot of like off-the-shelf E3D parts and whatnot. Don't want to get too much into this. If you want to know more about this printer, I can talk about it later. But we're going to go ahead and set up this printer to go ahead and print the part. Out of the 
printer. We're gonna go ahead and test fit this. Uh, once the test fit's good, we're gonna go ahead and return this. That way I get all my money back. Nah, just kidding, don't do that. But that does bring up a very interesting point, which is what's technically stopping people from buying this, scanning it, printing it, and then returning this. Sell both of them and then print some more. I don't need to sell this, I can return it. And I can sell this. Oh. Right? I'll print it black, then return that one as that. And keep the original. Oh. Ah. No, don't do that. Custom mods, we do it for anything you try. You want your right to turn heads? This is where it comes alive. If you can imagine it, we can create it. Nothing is impossible with the Lumastatic.